Hello everyone and welcome to another video on using COCA to improve your academic writing. In this video we're going to focus uh, specifically on the part of speech search option. Now this is an option that you can include with uh, a lot of different searching functions within COCA. So what does this uh, option do? Well, uh, number one, you can look for words that match a certain part of speech. So for example, in a two word phrase, blank research, uh, you can look for common adjectives that help describe research. Uh, the second thing that might be useful to you is if a word can be used as a multiple parts of speech, this can limit the search to only one particular part of speech. So for example, we can use state as both a verb and a noun. So perhaps in your searching, you want to specify, are you looking for state as a verb or state as a noun? Otherwise your results, uh, you might get a little bit of noise in your results because it's just looking for state as a verb and a noun. So why might this be helpful? Um, so the first part is, this can help you find some more common or academic descriptors for some terms. So for example, adverbs used to describe ideal. Maybe you want to look for academic uh, common adverbs used to describe this noun. Um, this can also help answer some fairly tricky grammatical questions as well. So for example, uh, preposition use is, is a topic that uh, can be somewhat difficult to determine. So you can look for options, the most common options of prepositions after a verb, for example, include. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. So I'm going to uh, go back to that first search of common adjectives that occur before research. So I'm going to limit this to the academic section and I'm going to click on this part of speech function here. It's going to give me a drop down menu and adjective all and research. Now you'll notice here that there is a space between these two uh, um, search terms. So that will be important uh, in a little bit later on when I contrast it with another uh, search function. So here we go, find the matching strings. And right away you can see uh, the, the most common adjectives used to describe research in the academic section of the corpus. Um, and again, if I click on any of these bars, it will give me additional context. So, so let's look at that other example, example that I stated, and that is for state. Now, maybe I, like I said, maybe I don't want to search for state as a verb and a noun, I just want to limit my search to state as a verb. Let's say I want to know, is state as a verb used more frequently in academic contexts or other contexts? So I'm actually going to use the chart function. Um, I'm going to put in state and then part of speech, verb. And right away you can see here that there is no space in between state and this uh, verb code. And that essentially is telling the corpus, I want state as a verb, not just state as a noun or state as all things. So again, I want to search this in the chart function because I want to compare across different genres. And so right here you can see, um, uh, state as a verb is used most frequently in news and academic writing, least frequently in the other subsections of the corpus. So, so those are some useful, uh, those are the basic ways to use this uh, part of speech search function in corpus, in the corpus. Um, I will uh, continue and describe a few other uh, specific examples uh, in the next video. So now I want to use part of speech search functions. And I'm just going to walk through these examples that I gave and then two other quick examples. So the first one, adverbs used to describe ideal. Uh, again, I will go to the corpus and I'm going to insert part of speech, adverb, and then ideal. And again, I want this in 
perhaps the academic context. Um, and so here, here we see uh, some of these uh, some of these common ad adverbs. Uh, not surprisingly, they are you know um, qualifiers or modifiers. More ideal, most ideal, nearly ideal, less ideal. Um, so, so here's an example of what you might find for that. Now, the, the second option is um, I wanted to look for prepositions that occur after the verb include. So I'm going to put in include and space preposition all. Um, find matching strings. Uh, so we can see here by far include in is the most common uh, preposition that occurs after this verb include. But you can see there are some other options, right? Include in, on, as, among, with, etc. So if I was confident that include in is the context that I am looking for, Maybe I will just use that, but maybe I am not quite sure. I might want to explore some of these other contexts to see if, just to double check that what I am using is correct. So again, I could click on these bar charts here, and I could, I could see this more in a little bit more context, and uh, perhaps uh, what I would do next is to um, see if these contexts are similar to my own writing context. And if it is, then maybe uh, include on is something that I would use, right? Include on their website, include on a map, include on daily rounds, include on your record. So, so examining this, maybe I would see that perhaps this is more appropriate for my own context.